Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. Today we'll be reviewing Lab 2 of the Cisco OpenSDN Controller Hands-On Labs, specifically exploring the OpenSDN Controller UI. At the end of Lab 1, uh, we kicked off the installation of the OpenSDN controller by just uh, basically clicking an install button and it went ahead and installed the controller and the cluster configuration successfully completed and now it's just asking us to choose a new password or passphrase uh, for the administrator account uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and click change passphrase and then it will go ahead and allow me to log in and it went ahead and brought up the uh, GUI interface to the OpenSDN controller so we're gonna go ahead and look at a couple things here um, which hopefully you'll find interesting has a lot of information if there uh, if the controller came up and there was a problem instead of the green lights that we see here you would see uh, either yellow or red and you could actually uh, then uh, basically drill down to see what specific uh, service was having a problem so for example the controller uh, obviously has the controller core that's running the logs uh, have the elastic search and flume that's running uh, different services uh, metrics uh, has a few and then and then the system has uh, various services that are running that are needed uh, for the controller to uh, to work correctly so besides um, the basic services tab which is the tab that's displayed when you first log into the controller you can also look at various metrics uh, so you can come up here uh, to the icon up here and uh, here uh, if you want to get back to the services at a later time uh, than when you first actually log into uh, the controller just come back here and, and click on services and it'll take you to the screen uh, but you can also go ahead and, and actually take a look at the metrics and uh, it'll basically show you um, the uh, information as far as CPU and memory and load and heap size and all the type of information that you'll want to see uh, just to make sure that the controller is, is working correctly. Um, you do have the ability uh, to go ahead and, and look specifically at a specific time zone or you can set a custom time zone if you want. Um, or you can just highlight over a specific area that you're interested in and uh, the page will automatically refresh based on uh, the time period that uh, uh, that you're highlighting. So very very useful if you're wanting to drill down specifically to a certain time period let's say there is some issue and you just want to make sure that there wasn't a CPU or, or uh, some type of problem but um, as you can see this is uh, just a, a big spike at first basically when the controller is just configuring itself and then after it's basically come online you can see that the CPU has, has gone down and memory is, is pretty stable uh, loads fine and heap size and yeah, obviously not much uh, uh, network usage so besides uh, the actual metrics we can also uh, take a look at the logs and in the logs are lots of, of different um, areas that you can look at it lots of different sections um, there's a log activity which again the controller just booted up so not a lot of information um, but if you wanted to drill down to a specific area you also have the choice of highlighting and then not only does uh, this information change uh, but the whole uh, whole page basically is refreshed based on that that time period um, and you can always um, hit the go to save default to go ahead and revert back to uh, basically uh, the initial or default information you can uh, 
certainly query for uh, specific information. Uh, if you're looking for something, um, you can look specifically into uh, the log summary or go to a component. Let's say you're really just interested in uh, something to do with the controller core. You can actually filter by just selecting that. And then now only information, uh, the entire page is uh, displayed as far as the summary and the activity and everything else, just based on the, the 288 controller core syslog information. So very convenient and uh, very easy to use. Um, as far as the actual uh, logs, you're able to actually click into it and see more information as far as um, what the different values are for each of the fields. And if you wanted to query specifically um, on that, let's go ahead and, and pull one up here. Let's say you wanted to pull something in regards to oh uh, just this IP address you could actually just uh, hit the filter button right here and it will automatically go ahead and filter just based on specifically uh, that IP address so it's very easy uh, to query uh, both um, you know from the log file directly or um, a component log summary or if you wanted to uh, come down here and drill down on time uh, of course, you always have the capability of also coming to the top and making an adjustment and uh, seeing information based on a specific time period or a custom time period that, you, uh, that you're interested in. So that is the log feature. Uh, besides um, looking at the logs, metrics, and services, uh, you also have the capability of looking at uh, and managing the users and features of the controller uh, basically uh, to administer the users go ahead and click on users and from here you can go ahead and edit uh, add delete uh, for example if we want to go ahead and add a, another user we could go ahead and do that Enter a couple details of information here. And then give it a role. Uh, this person obviously can be a user or an administrator. We'll go ahead and uh, make him an administrator and hit save. Okay. And it's uh, basically that easy. So he has the, uh, that role as a user and he can go ahead and, and use the controller but he's not allowed to actually make the configuration changes as far as features or things like that. Uh, the features uh, tab will go ahead and allow you to activate and deactivate uh, different modules. It has a really nice uh, capability um, to look for uh, features. So for example if we wanted to look at uh, the OpenFlow plugin just simply start typing OpenFlow and it will automatically bring up uh, all the different features and it will also tell you the version if they're active or not and this also gives the ability uh, to activate or deactivate uh, just by highlighting over it. Um, there is a couple, uh, a couple uh, features that uh, aren't enabled by default that we will need uh, in future labs so we'll go ahead and, and enable those now. Uh, the first one would be the OpenFlow plugin all. As you can see, it's currently not enabled. So what you do to enable that is just highlight over the action button. And when it uh, says activate, just go ahead and make one click. And sometimes it takes a minute or two. Um, it gives you a, a basically a green uh, box here and it tells you that the ODL OpenFlow plugin all will undergo the selected action so it will be activated shortly. You go ahead and click out of that then what I would do is just go ahead and just verify uh, that it's been activated and as you can see it has been activated. The other feature or module that we'll need to activate uh, actually in support of OpenFlow also is the L2 Switch 2. So we just, if I 
can spell it correctly. So L2 uh, switch dash switch right here is not activated. So again, just highlight on that and hit activate. And this one takes a little bit longer. It should come up in just a second. And when it comes up, um, we can go ahead and, and cross it out. I will tell you that a lot of times, especially depending on what you're trying to install, it, it will take like a minute or two for it to pop up. It's just loading the software and verifying everything. So it looks like uh, it says it's going to undergo that uh, selected action. So again, I usually just click out of it and then just uh, switch uh, or, or search for it again. And, and you, as you can see, it's been activated. This is basically identical to uh, you know, what you would do when you're working with Open Daylight Helium and you're working in the craft when you're doing an install. So you can certainly do that. Uh, the Cisco Open SDN controller does allow you, uh, and that's what I mentioned in the lab guide, is if you want to actually look or work with the, the craft portal, you can certainly do that. Um, it's something that I, I usually don't do, but uh, because this, this interface is, is much cleaner, but you can certainly do that. The uh, other thing besides the features is if you wanted to, you also have the capability <clears throat> of exporting uh, diagnostic data. And this is really convenient if you're um, <clears throat> having some issues Maybe you're, you're wanting to, to um, send the data to, to get analyzed. It has a really nice uh, built-in feature to basically just export uh, all the diagnostic information, uh, which can be saved and then uh, uh, obviously sent to wherever it needs to be uh, for it to be diagnosed if you're working with an application or, or something like that. So that's a really neat feature. The other thing that's actually built in, let's see, and here's the diagnostic data right here. It's a, automatically makes it a tar file. Um, the other thing that you can uh, do is look at the APIs for the controller. It has a built-in um, menu of APIs, and just go ahead and click um, available APIs. And this has two different tabs, and we'll be working with the second one in a later lab. Uh, but uh, on the first tab, the controller resources basically lists uh, all of the APIs that you can work with and it'll it'll give you the uh, basically the format and uh, so for example if you want to look at network topology you can actually click into here and this gives you all the different commands uh, for uh, getting information posting information maybe uh, you're wanting to delete something from the network topology all of this uh, uh, all of these uh, APIs are very well documented and in fact you can even uh, in most cases if you're wanting to use like a, for example a, take this information use a rest call you can hit uh, try it out and basically it will go ahead and give you uh, the, the uh, format that you would need to copy and paste uh, to do a rest conf call if you wanted to do that uh, certainly don't have to there's lots of different ways uh, working with the OpenSDN controller that you can do things, but uh, you can certainly use this if you're having some questions and, and you're needing an answer on you know, how a specific um, RESTConf call would work or how a specific API would work. So that uh, pretty much is everything and, and completes Lab 2 and then in Lab 3 we'll be doing actual some configuration uh, basically getting the uh, BG PLS manager uh, configured, uh, which entails um, setting the OpenSDN controller up as a route reflector client.